Hi, I'm Shannon from houseimprovements.com and in today's video I want to show you uh, what I would do to add rigid insulation to the exterior of your home. Uh, so basically you'd want to be doing this to improve the R value obviously of your home and in our example today we're adding 2 inch uh, XPS insulation to the outside. Now there's a, a few things you got to do ahead of time obviously you need to remove your old insulation or stucco or whatever you had on the wall. Uh, replace and uh, improve any imperfections there was in the old sheathing if you have any um, those sorts of things okay and then there's a couple different ways you can go about the tie par or the sorry the house wrap uh, you could either have the house wrap like I do right against the wood of the house you can see the wood up here actually so I've got a shiplap style older home I've got the house wrap here, which will be underneath the foam that's on the wall. You can see the house wrap there. Now you could put the foam on first and house wrap after. Um, really the, the, what I like, why I like to do it this way is because when you fasten this over the foam, sometimes if you don't get enough fasteners in it, it's flapping and that sort of thing. So it's here, we still got our moisture barrier so that if any moisture gets through the foam, which is very unlikely, but if any does, you still got your barrier on the plywood to protect the plywood. So like I said, you could do it either way. I prefer to do it this way, but I've done it both ways. Um, we're also using uh, shiplap style foam. If you look down here, I've got a sheet here. So the edges are actually shiplapped. There's a half inch by uh, one inch groove here. So there's no joints that are lining right up that go directly back to the wall. So we, we're kind of overlapping and, and reducing the chances of cold just transferring straight through those cracks. Uh, so we talked about the house wrap. Uh, once you get that all on, there's some other areas that can kind of be trouble areas for you that you need to deal with beforehand. Uh, one would be, in this case, we've got existing windows okay so we aren't changing our windows we're adding the foam to an existing wall so what's going to happen because we've got two inch foam our foam's actually going to be sticking out further past the windows and we've got another video showing how to deal with that to trim out the windows um, so that's that's one problem you can have the way around that is if you're changing your windows at the same time that's perfect what you would do is pull your old windows out and you would add uh, basically a wood frame or a wood buck all the way around the opening the same thickness as the foam you're using so if I'm using two inch foam what I would normally do is I would put a border of two by fours around that opening with a layer of half inch plywood on it to equal two inches and then that way then the window goes in and the window is totally out projecting uh, past the foam and you don't have that issue you can just add your siding after like normal um, so that's that's a way around it but in this case we've we've got vinyl windows uh, they're still in good shape and uh, we're just leaving them in place. Uh, other, other problems you could run into is a situation like this where you've got your power, your meter service, or your power service on the outside of the home. And uh, as a homeowner or a DIY or anybody, you, you, don't, you shouldn't be opening this or going in it to pull it off the wall to put foam behind it. And even if you did, honestly, you couldn't really do it with this thick of foam it would mean extending the wires the conduit would uh, probably not even flex that far anyway so so kind of what you're stuck with is leaving this in place and working around it so in my case my my meter box here already had a piece of plywood behind it and it was just painted and the J channel of the siding was butted up to it before so what I did is I put another piece of plywood down right to the bottom because all these pipes also are too close I can't get two inch foam back here either so I just put another piece of three quarter inch plywood to extend that plane down to the bottom. And then I had some custom metal bent up that'll cover this all in when it's done. So I've got this side done and you probably can't see it. Here's just a cut off. I put a piece of flat back here and I got a custom piece bent up that's gonna sit against that plywood, jog out to make up the difference for my styrofoam and then come across the face of the styrofoam a little bit just to, just to create a, a more waterproof edge here. So when, uh, when I go to put this side on, it'll basically sit something like this and I'll screw it on and then my foam will tuck into it. And then when, 
all is said and done. Can you see this edge? Okay, so when it's all said and done, the foam's behind there, you've got this return of the metal here. Now when I go to do my siding, I can actually just run my J-channel right along here and butt my siding into it. And, and I'll actually tape this too before the J-channel goes on with a sheathing tape. Okay, so that's how you, you gotta kinda invent some ways to work around some of this stuff that you can't move, it's permanently, permanently fixed in place. Um, things like vents, uh, receptacles, lights, that sort of thing, you should be able to build those all out and pull them out to the exterior where they'd normally be on the plane of the wall and not have to, in most cases you'd never have to do something like this around those things, they're usually movable. Uh, but something like this that's fixed right to the house, there's not too much you can do with it without doing a major change. So, so when this is all said and done, the siding's on there, this will look nice and clean and finished, it's maintenance free and uh, watertight too. So. Okay, now one of the other things I did in my case, so I, I put my house wrap on. Um, you can't actually see it, but I had kind of an ugly groove in the old parging on the lower part of the wall, and I wanted to hide that. So I've had to build out the wall a little bit to get down over top that edge. So I'm actually lowering my starting point in my siding about an inch and a half on the house here so that I can hide that ugly mess that, where the old uh, parging was. So again, to do that, I decided uh, because I'm dropping it so far, I used two by six material or five and a half inch material so that I can still get good fasteners up here into the wood, into the rim joists of the house. And this bottom part will just basically hang down over the, over the parging. And because I'm using two inch uh, foam, I used inch and a half material and some half inch uh, OSB behind it. Just equal my two inches because you can see here my foam is sitting right on top of that it kind of it actually works out nice it creates a bit of a ledge as well now uh, if I come a little further down here and hopefully the camera can zoom enough uh, because I've got my wrap running down behind this ledger board uh, I also used a piece of membrane peel and stick membrane to help direct water across the face of this wood if it gets behind the foam and down and it'll, it'll run out behind the siding. Um, chances are you won't get much moisture back there, but just in case you get a bit of condens condensation or something. You could also do this with a metal uh, flashing if you wanted to get one made, made up. Um, you could do it that way. I just find this stick-on membrane is easier. You can flex and fold it to any uh, profile that you need to, so. Okay, so that's on there. Our house wrap is all just stapled on as normal. All the seams are taped. And the house wrap is all taped to any of the windows or things that are protruding out, you can see here. So it's all sealed to keep water from running in behind it if it gets through there. Um, we've got this first piece on the wall. We're using, because of the two inch foam, we're using three inch roofing nails. And then I'm adding these uh, little roofing washer to them. Uh, you can buy uh, longer nails like this with kind of a plastic cap already on them. If that's cheaper than doing this in your area, then uh, there's no, no problem with that at all. But the idea is you need a, a little bigger head or a little bigger surface. So when you, you nail this on, uh, wind gets up, it doesn't just rip it off. This just holds a little better, has a little more holding power. You may not need the washer if you're putting your siding on almost immediately and you're not expecting any bigger winds. You might be able to get away with just siding nails and, and then putting your siding on right away because obviously your siding's all going to be nailed right through this as well. Now with your siding product, if you're, if you're using a siding, you have to make sure you're using long enough nails as well because you, need, you can't just nail into this foam, it'll never stay on there, it'll just rip off. So you need to make sure your nails, your fasteners are going through the foam layer and uh, at least you know, three quarters of an inch or so into the, the wood behind. So, um, I think that's pretty much got the basics covered. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll reposition the camera and I'll talk about what I did on the outside corners down here. And uh, then we'll get on with actually putting the foam on. Okay, so on the corners, what I do, uh, there's lots of guys that will just simply, if you're using two inch foam, they'll just run a two by four with a half inch piece of plywood up each side of the corner to give some good solid wood to nail your siding corner to. 
Um, the problem with that is now you've taken one of the worst areas of the house that has already got low R value and you've added even more wood to it and added basically zero R value to it. So what I like to do is wrap that corner in foam but then I, I go half inch less in thickness of foam on that and add half inch plywood over it. So you basically have the foam against the corner giving you some R value and then some half inch plywood that allows you to still fasten your whatever type of corner you're using into some actual wood. Uh, it's, it's something I prefer to do. I've seen people just run their styrofoam around that corner and put the corner right on it. It probably works okay. I'm just a little leery that, especially when you're using two inch, the problem with a normal vinyl siding corner is you might be able to nail one side good, but the other side's gonna be probably not even hit any wood. It's even, no matter how long a nail you'd used, because it's moved the corner out so much, you're just nailing totally into foam. And to me, I'm not sure that that'll stay on there long-term. So, so I like to have some wood to fasten the corner to. Uh, so again, so in our case, we're using two inch foam here. So I've got inch and a half foam wrapped just around the corner, about six inches each, each way. Then I nailed a piece of uh, half inch plywood, OSB, whatever over top of it. And uh, that forms my corner. Now I just butt into that with my, with my foam sheets on the wall. You can kind of see around this corner, basically what we're gonna have is a finished effect. Uh, so we've got our, our outside corners here and then we've got our vinyl siding covering the wall. And you might even be able to see kind of the window detail a little bit up there too, so. Now, uh, in my other video, we'll be dealing with the window detail, um, showing you how to do that. So we'll cover that later. Okay, I think we'll get uh, repositioned. Like I said, we've got the one piece on the wall. Now we're gonna cut this next piece. So I'll show you how to make all the cuts and we'll put it on the wall. Okay, so uh, when you're gonna measure around obstacles, uh, it's like anything else. You're just picking your point to measure off of. So in this case, I would use this sheet and I'm uh, measuring right to the edges of the window and uh, then up from the ledger of the window or ledger on the bottom to the bottom of the window. And then if you have something at that end too, you can measure there. Uh, I've, I've marked all those measurements out on here. You can see the black lines. I'm gonna cut those out as well as uh, because of how I'm starting uh, and, the sh and the lip shiplap on the foam, I need to cut that bottom lip off so that I've got the full two inches of foam sitting down on here, okay? so. Um, that might be what I do first. So I'm just going to stand my sheet up and maybe you'll be able to see this a little better if I turn it here so I don't get too close to you. So you can see my, my lip that I've got there. This is the surface I want out facing out on the wall. So I need to cut this lip off so that we're right down at this edge. Now, simplest way it is, is to use a sharp bladed utility knife that extends like this. Just lay it on there nice and far. And if you make kind of one pass first, it just kind of gets you started. You're just laying, you're using this as a guide to get you so you're not tilted too much, hopefully. Just laying flat on there and just pulling the knife through it. So then if you just make a couple more cuts, it should come out the other side and you should end up with a pretty darn flat cut. And if you don't, just trim it up a little bit. So I'll just do the rest of this one. The sharper, sharper blade you have, the better. So other ways that you can, things you can do for cutting this, you could use a circular saw, you could use a table saw. Um, the knife is by far the quickest. You could even use a hand saw, like a drywall saw or a wood saw or anything. Uh, if you've got to drill round holes, you can still use uh, like cup saws on it, hole saws, that sort of thing. So, okay, so we got that cut off. Now we've got this upper notch we need to cut out for the window there and I've got it marked out. And I'll just use my straight edge here. Once we kind of get it scored and you've got that line to help your blade follow, you really don't need the straight edge after that. So I'm not trying to cut all the way through on the first pass. Those hawks don't like us working here today. I'm 
I'm just going to make a few passes like I did on the bottom edge. Now you've, when you've got that blade out so far, you've got to be really careful where the rest of your limbs are. If that breaks off or you slip, that is going to cut you bad. Okay, and the same thing up these edges. I'm just going to freehand that. I'm just trying to cut as square as I can. Same thing at this end. Don't be afraid to make multiple passes. If you try to force it too much, that's when you're gonna slip and cut yourself probably. Okay, so we've got our piece out of there. You can see that it does a pretty nice job. You're gonna get some little fuzzy edges or whatever, but as long as you're fairly square, Everything should work out and fit fit nicely. And we've got the shiplap edge here. So on this sheet, the shiplap's hanging out on the front edge. On the sheet we're going up against, the long edge is on the back, so they overlap each other. So we'll just give this a try, see if it fits. And it's gonna be a little tight. Actually, I've got to cut some off that end. So I'm going to cut this to length and then we'll put it up. Okay, so we got this trimmed up now. We should be able just to put it right in place. Don't worry if you've got a little bit of a gap there. If you get any gaps like that, you can go around with some spray foam and, and uh, fill those in. As long as it's fitting. Okay, and uh, so I'm going to use these nails with the big uh, washers on them. And uh, this home has three quarter inch shiplap on it as we talked about before, so I'm not really worried about hitting studs or anything. If you can, preferably, try to hit the studs if you've just got a house with plywood on it, but it's pretty tough to really get that all to work out. But And because uh, we're gonna be siding and not too long of a time period. I'm not going too crazy with the nails. Uh, as you can see, I basically got, well, I'll have eight nails on that one. I've, I'm one short right now. But if you're not gonna be putting anything else over it for a while, you probably, I would say, should have a dozen nails in that, okay? And you can see I, I stayed away from this back edge because this one's overlapping this one. So now I can put this nail here and it kind of pinches that one in place. And just hammer those in just so they basically flatten out to the surface of the foam. Okay, so we've got those pieces on. I've pre-cut the two uh, larger pieces here, which is all I'm gonna put on for the video's sake. Uh, you would also fill in above the window, there's a little strip up there you can see that we'll, we'll be missing after, that you would normally fill in. Same as above this window and a little strip here. Now, you're, as you go through the process of doing this, like I said, this is all shiplap types of foam. You're gonna have the odd joint where there isn't the shiplap finish and uh, it's not a huge deal but you know try to use as many of the factory shiplap edges as you can um, and we're going to tape the joints as well.
Okay, so like I said, uh, you should go and fill in all those spots and I will after, but I just for the sake of the time of the video, I just wanna continue on here. So when you get some spots like this, got a little bit of a wavy cut, you can take some spray foam and just spray that gap in if you want. Um, it's not in my mind 100% necessary that that the uh, gaps are completely sealed tight, uh, but you know you don't want anything say any bigger than an eighth of an inch. Uh, now the next step would be to go around and tape any seams that you have, and really the right way to do it is do all your lower seams and then work your way up so that the tape here is overlapping the tape there. Uh, it's not that big of an issue in this situation, but that is the way you should do it. So we're just using, uh, it's white, but it's really just uh, regular uh, uh, house wrap type tape. Let's put it on, make sure it's stuck really well. <laughs> You don't need to worry about taping the, the nails for this. Just get all your seams taped up and then you should be fine. Uh, now, normally I, because we've taped the house wrap in behind to the window, I don't feel there's any reason to be taping here. Now you can't really tape to this because it's gonna be seen. And if you watch the other video I talked about, you'll see how I uh, add the trim onto here to, to hide this difference where the foam sticks out from the window. I think that pretty much should wrap it up. Um, can't think of anything else. So if you uh, think of something that you had a question for, you can always go to our forum and uh, post your question there and we can surely answer you from there. Um, if, if you aren't familiar with house improvements, like and subscribe to our channel and the, then you'll be notified anytime we do put a video out. You can look at all the other content that we have. Uh, if you want to help support us a little extra to, to keep making these videos that you're watching, uh, you can also maybe check out our Patreon and uh, become a supporter there as well. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, I look forward to you watching the next one.